Hey everybody, this is Jerry the Snake Man and welcome you to episode 3 of Snake Clips. Today we're going to do cobras. We have three different cobras for you today. We have a monocle cobra, we have an albino monocle cobra, and we have a spitting cobra, which I call double trouble. Stay tuned. Hello, today we're bringing you the monocle cobra. This is a monocle cobra. It's from India. These are what is referred to as the snake charmers cobras. These are the cobras you see most of the time when snake charmers would be charming the snakes. As you can hear his loud hiss. Here he is flaring up a little bit for us. He's just trying to escape right now. Monocle cobras are identified by the monocle marking that's on the back of their neck. These markings appear to be an eye. When the snake is threatened, he will raise the front part of his body up. He will display this monocle marking and he will show us, as he did right here, he will show us the back of his neck in this way he will look intimidating. And he will think he's a larger animal and the other prey will leave him alone. When this uh, snake grows up, he can be of a length of five to seven feet. He has a lifespan. He has a lifespan of living for 30 years. He has a preferred diet of rats and mice and other small rodents. And in addition to the rodents, the cobra also eat birds, amphibians, and other prey. He also will eat snakes occasionally. When he flicks his tongue out, he picks up the scent of his prey and he pulls it back in his mouth across the Jacobson organ and that Jacobson organ tells him what that part scent particles are that are on his tongue. This cobra hunts at dawn and dusk mostly and it strikes at a speed that the prey does not have time to escape. Then the venom is released from his fangs. Instead of one quick strike like you'll see most rattlesnakes do, or other vipers, cobras tend to bite and hang on and chew on their prey, injecting venom over and over again until the prey um, stops moving and he has a fatal reaction. As you can hear, he's doing a lot of hissing here. Hopefully you can hear that over my talking. Um, this cobra has few predators. The only predators he really has is the mongoose, because the mongoose is quick enough to jump and strike and grab the cobra by his throat before the cobra has time to strike him. The other predators that this uh, mon monocle cobra has are um, other snakes and people. Humans are the biggest predator of the snake. When this snake is within what we call a human community, there's a lot of rodents in there, so the snakes will go into that community. But when they do, people usually will kill them on sight because they are a very deadly snake. One bite is capable of killing a human if no anti-venom is available. So they will kill them on sight, but yet they do respect the snake, knowing that when this snake is out in the wild, out in the grasslands, out in the wetlands, the rice paddies, and whatever, that this snake is a very valuable part of their community as rodent control. So even though he's a very venomous snake, he also is a very valuable snake to that community.
Okay, this is a monocle cobra. And we have the monocle cobra right now under a basket. And if you listen real closely, I think you can hear him hissing. Now, when I pick this basket up very quickly, hopefully what's going to happen is he is going to flare up because the light is going to hit him. He's going to come out of here being very protective. Let's see what happens. Nope. It's not going to flare up for us, unfortunately. Um, this cobra is actually very used to being handled, so he is a little docile. But as you can see, he's a beautiful cobra. His colorations are basically missing. He's only um, has his little pink and his a uh, little bit of red. He's got his eyes are, are red, which is the pigmentation behind him. So that's why you really can't see any color in his eyes. Monocle uh, cobras are not rare. But it's estimated that one out of every 10,000 cobras that are born, or one out of every 10,000 animals that are born actually, are born albino. Now, uh, what happens is though is with these colorations, it's very hard for this cobra to hide out in the wild. So he'd be seen very easily, at which point um, he would be able to be eaten by other predators. So these are generally killed very when they're very young age because they are eaten by other animals. Um, and they usually don't have a chance to mature to pass this albino trait on to the next generations. But when these snakes and other snakes like them are taken into captivity, they are bred with other albinos so this trait can be passed on to the next generation. When two albinos are mated together, you will have all albino babies. Now, we have a notion that snakes and cobras are very aggressive and mean snakes, but as you can see, this guy here has no in inkling to want to try to bite me. Um, he's really being cool right now. He's just moving around. He's really putting up with me. I'm trying to get him up in the air here a little bit. As you can hear, or maybe you can't, but he's doing a little bit of a hissing noise. That's his way of telling me I don't want to be handled, leave me alone, but you're not that big of a threat, so I don't plan on trying to bite you. Now let's see if we can get him flare up for us at least one time. Again, as you can see, he's not afraid of me. He doesn't show any signs that he wants to be aggressive toward me, unfortunately. So today we're not going to be able to show you this guy flared up, but if you look very closely at the, the head here, on the back of his neck, you can see the beautiful marking on the back of his neck. His head is completely without markings, and he's got a beautiful non-colored body on him. These snakes are very beautiful, but when they're in their enclosure and they're disturbed, they do flare up quite often, but right now they choose not to do so. Okay, hopefully you can hear me. I'm wearing a face shield right now because the next cobra we have up is a spitting cobra. This is a black and white spitting cobra. Now we're going to try one more time to use the basket idea um, in order to see if we can get him to flare up right away. Um, normally when a snake is in total darkness um, and you lift the darkness and light shines in on them very quickly, it causes them to become defensive and flare up. Hopefully that's what's going to happen now, but we can't guarantee it. As you saw before with the albino cobra, when we lifted up the, the basket very quickly, the snake was apparently sleeping. So hopefully this time that's not going to happen. This is again a black and white spitting cobra. And again, the basket idea didn't work too much. He did flare up a little bit for us, which is pretty cool. Let's see if we can get him to do it a little more. Again, this is a spitting cobra, so I am wearing a face shield right now. And he's looking for a way to get out. These cobras are also known as Indo-Chinese cobras and thigh cobras. They're from Southeast Asia. Um, they range in habitats including lowlands, plains, woodlands. Um, they also come from jungle habitats. And these snakes, too, are attracted to human communities due to the fact is that there is... Uh, an abundance of rats normally associated with human communities when with the trash and everything. This is a medium-sized snake who only get about three to five feet in length. 
He has a black and white body as you can see. The snake is primarily a nocturnal snake. So when he's encountered during the daytime hours, what he'll normally do is just try to run away from you um, and go down a burrow hole or something. But at nighttime, if he's encountered, he usually will flare up. He will show you his full hood. He will um, raise the front part of his body off the ground. He will spit venom at you. And if this doesn't work, at which point he will try to lunge forward and strike at you. Cobras can only strike in a downward motion, so this means that when he raises his body up, he will charge forward with his body raised and he will strike down and try to bite you. Um, they're very aggressive at, at night when they're encountered. Again, if he were to bite you, normally he does not strike like a viper, which is a quick jab. These type of snakes like to latch on and chew savagely, injecting venom in each and every bite. They are pretty aggressive snakes. Um, Again, they're killed on sight normally because of their defense. If he were to spit venom into your eyes, it would become extremely painful. Um, you would re receive temporary blindness, if not permanent blindness, later on. And again, as you can see, he really doesn't want to flare up for us, unfortunately. He's not. He flares up more when they're in their enclosures. They're kind of protecting their little space that they're on. Right now, he's just looking for a way to get away from me.